Hello world, my name is Ihor and this is another episode of Beats from Scratch. And today I actually figured out that I don't really have a syntax only techno video on my YouTube channel. So there it goes. Let's make a beat from scratch on the syntax in a style of techno. Also, one of my patrons suggested that I could share the project files from the electron boxes, from the tracks that I make in these videos, so that the community can take advantage of it, learn a couple of new things, and also explore in, into a little bit more detail what I make in these patterns. And uh, while I'm not sure about all electron boxes, because some of them are sample based, and since these samples, I purchased these samples, I'm not sure if I can share them with the project files and stuff like that. But on the syntax, it's absolutely doable. Because syntax doesn't have any dependency management, it's a synth and everything is created inside of this box. It doesn't have any samples. So yeah, I will be sharing this project file on my Patreon page. So if you're interested in that and also you want to support me, you can go to patreon.com slash ehor, choose one of the tiers and become my patron you will also get the access to our Discord community. And for the setup today is very straightforward. We have a syntax and that's gonna be our main source of uh, sounds and pretty much everything. We are at 132 BPM. I think it's quite classic for the techno track. And actually let me talk about the arrangement of the track groups over here because I have developed some kind of a strategy to approach this. It's good to have consistency when it comes to putting sounds on different tracks. For example, having a kick drum always on track one or track nine, or having a synth sound on track seven, or having a clap on track three, and so on. Take, for example, presets on the syntax. They really lack consistency. You load a pattern and you have no idea what this pattern is. There are quite a lot of good patterns, but every time you play them, you have to kind of relearn them from scratch because you have no idea where the percussions are, you don't really know where the synth sounds are. But when you're developing your own tracks, I think it's essential to have this consistency in place, because then you can come back to the track that you've played or developed a couple of months before and still remember where the things are, or also it's gonna make it easier for you to transition from one track into another track. And while on the DigiTag you have eight tracks and pretty much all of them are labeled, which kind of simplifies the thing, here on the syntax nothing is labeled. And uh, on top of that you have analog tracks and the digital tracks. I have developed my own strategy and I would like to share it. Usually I would go track nine is gonna be most of the times my kick drum and track one is going to be my additional kick drum or ghost kick drum or actually rumble. Then track 10 is a snare and lately I've been using it more like an additional layer for the kick drum and rumble, like a high layer for it. Then track 211, these are like kind of free tracks that I can load pretty much any percussion sound or whatever sound there is. Then the track 3 usually is my clap but also can be a percussion. Track 4 and 12 are my cymbals or hi-hats. And then these four tracks from 5 till 8, these are tonal sounds or synths. It can be tone, it can be chord or something different, but these are the synth sounds. And then when I'm playing, I know if I mute, for example, these two tracks, I mute kick and rumble. Quite actually handy to do it with one finger over here. Or if I mute this one, I mute the clap. Or for example, if I select this one and then hit some retrigs, it's gonna retrigger a clap and create some kind of like energy boost before breaking it, for example. Or if I mute one of these tracks, it's gonna mute one of the tonal sounds. And now let me demonstrate you my homework and then we're gonna continue working on the track. This is actually the second time I'm trying to record this jam because the first time, at the very end, when I was almost done, the syntax did this. No. I hope it was saved. And obviously nothing was saved. So let's get started. And for the setup today, I have a syntax, super simple, nothing else. And the syntax is at 132 BPM. This is quite techno, classic techno situation. I also have just one page with 16 tricks so that 
it's easier and I'm gonna use some trick conditions and stuff like that. And I have done my homework and I have prepared the kick and rumble sound already that sounds like this. Also, I checked the levels of the rumble and everything in Ableton so that, you know, it has a proper amount of energy. And I think it sounds really good. And as you can see, there are like three tracks involved. So first of all, there is a kick drum on track nine. Let's have a listen. So this one is super straightforward and I filtered out the high end so that we have only low end going and it's just four on the floor pattern. Then I have this snare over here that sounds like this. This one, again, four on the floor, exactly where the kick drum is, but it's a layer for a kick drum to layer on top of it. And uh, I used the rim shot over here and together with the kick drum, it sounds like this. Very powerful. This combination of two triggers or two tracks actually gives me an opportunity or possibility to change the energy whenever I need. For example, I can remove the kick in anticipation of something else, right? To have this kind of punchy effect going, but without um, low end and then bring it back. Or for example, in some intros or outros, I can remove high end, the high part of the kick drum and only leave this kind of like low end going. And also I have a rumble on the track one. And this one is a little bit more trickier than others. So if I go into the sequencer, you can see it has a little bit more triggers. And actually I was thinking how to make this kick drum or rumble actually to work with pumping effect with ducking, but without going into the effects track because Whenever I send super low end sound into the effects track and then use the inverted amp envelope over there to, to duck it, it sometimes creates these kind of clicks and snaps and whatever. I don't really like it. And then suddenly it hit me. I can use velocity for that. Basically, if you have a look here at these triggers and at these two triggers where our kick is and, and the, the snare or rim shot is, the velocity of the rumble is at one. Basically, it's muted. You won't be able to hear it. But these guys, they have kind of like long tail. But then whenever the, for example, this four tr fourth trigger works, it immediately get cut, gets cut by the fifth trigger because it, it plays at the velocity one. And hence, we have such a pumping effect over here. And together with the kick drum, sounds like this. I think it's very nice. So the next thing I would like to work on is a bass line. And this one is going to be some kind of like a rolling bass line. Also quite classic in techno and trance music. So I'm gonna go into this one, track five. It is a tone and let me change it to some something more bassy. drive it. Yep. Here I would also like to use the ADSR envelope to make our attack a little bit more louder, like the, the first part of the bass line, and then sustain it a little bit to the lower volume. Like this. And then we can use an LFO also to change the, what is called feedback, LFO one. Yeah, synth feedback. And I'm gonna use the triangle wave or sine. Actually the difference between sine wave and triangle wave for the LFO is that the sine wave, it goes to the edges a little bit more quicker and stays closer to the edges for a longer time. While the, triangle wave bounces, right? So hope that makes sense. Let's uh, introduce a little bit so that we, we have we have it constantly changing. And also I can introduce like some odd number 
something like 26.41. So that um, it's not really synced. And then I'm going to send uh, it a little bit into the re reverb. For the reverb, let's make it darker and longer. Not super dark, though. Yeah, I think like this is fine. Let's get back to this one and... Yep. Also, let's use the filter and filter out. I'm going to put all these triggers over here and use the same trick that I used on the rumble. So these triggers are going to have one velocity. And also, I'm going to change the velocities of these triggers a little bit. Yeah, like this, I think is going to be fine. And let's have a listen. What I can actually do here is to use this trigger and open up the envelope a little bit more. Not a little bit, but quite a lot more. And send this one into delay. And let's work on the delay a little bit. So I'm going to make it ping pong. Remove the entire low end from it. And send a little bit back to reverb. More feedback. Nice. A bit less reverb, uh, feedback. And we can also use a second filter and remove very bassy sub low end from this bass line. Then we can make it louder and it's not interfering with our rumble. And now let's actually work a little bit on the delay. I made it um, like a ping pong, but then we have this stereo width that defines how the ping pong delay is going to work on the syntax. And actually it works. Um, yeah, let me let me show you an example. So I'm going to go higher a little bit like this. Um, yeah. So if I send this one into delay, right now it's going to be on everything like in your face. Right? But then if I introduce stereo width to it, if I'm going to the plus territory, to the positive territory, it's going to start bouncing from the right to left. And if I'm going the opposite way, it's going the opposite way, Le left first and then right. Right? I think it's a little bit too much of the feedback, but it's fine. If I leave it as such as I usually do, it's kind of, for me, it creates kind of like a static uh, bouncing from the right to the left, which I don't really like. And in the syntax, we fortunately, we can modulate that. And if we go into the effects track, into the LFO, one of the destination can be the stereo width of the delay. And I'm going to select the wave um, sine wave, which stays at the edges a little bit longer and reaches the edges faster and introduce some modulation to it. And now every time something hits into the delay, it's going to bounce from different points. It's going to start bouncing from these different points. Let's have a listen. So first one. Almost everything in the center. Right, left. Again, almost in the center, left, right. Isn't that cool? I think it is. We can uh, also introduce a bit more uh, multiplication of it so that um, the LFO goes faster. And um, yeah, now let's have a listen. We only have one sound that goes into the delay, actually one trigger that goes into the delay. And so far, I think it's going to create an interesting sound. We can also um, go into this LFO and introduce some odd number as well, so that it's not really synced with the tempo. And 
yeah, I think it's very cool. And uh, we can move on to the next sound. And our next sound is going to be, I'm going to go into track seven. And this one is going to be some kind of like a long gate impact bass sound, whatever. So it's going to be, um, which one I can select? Yes, Swarm. But this one I would like to be very kind of dirty and very like, yeah, not very melodic. So I can go down. Yeah, something like this. It still has tone to it. I'm gonna go into the second filter and remove very low end. And here I would also like to set the hold time to note. So this means that as long as we keep the note pressed, the sound is going to play like this. And then we can obviously introduce some decay. Yeah, something like this. And with an LFO, I would like to modulate the amp panning like this and uh, a little bit faster. Yeah. Yes. So I'm going to put one trigger at the really beginning and this one is going to sound 16 steps, which is exactly one bar. And so far it's going to sound like this obviously too loud and it's never ending let's introduce the trick condition so that it plays every second time or every first out of two times yeah i think that's fine but then i would like it to play only once per eight bars but so far i can work on it like this i'm gonna go a little bit into the reverb And also, I think it's a right time to work on the effects track. Yes. So I'm going to go into the effects track and send delay reverb into the effects track. I'm not going to send our baseline because we have ducking there already, but I'm going to send this um, like dirty synth sound into it and other synth sounds if we're going to introduce them at some point. And now let's work on the effect docking. So I'm going to go into the amp page over here and introduce inverted envelope to it like this. And then in the sequencer, I'm going to put four on the floor exactly where our kick is. And these triggers are going to trigger this inverted envelope. Let's have a listen. We need to introduce a bit more depth. Since our docking is kind of reducing the volume because it cuts it at the beginning and then creates some kind of release to bring the volume back, we can introduce some amplification of the entire signal that goes into the effects block by adding more drive. And I think it's very nice. Okay, let's go back to our baseline on the track seven and set it this one to sound only once per eight iterations. And now also send a little bit of this sound into the delay and more into reverb and leave it a little bit longer decay. Yes, I like it. And maybe touch louder. 
like 50 or something. Yo, that's very nice. Okay, let's add some more percussive elements and call it a track. First of all, let's go and find some open hi-hat. And to do this, I'm gonna go into the sound browser over here. And there is a filter function. I can filter by hi-hats and try to find one that I like. This one is nice. Oh, UK hat. I think this one is my favorite. Let's uh, just put classic off beat hi-hat and have a listen. Whoa. it in a little bit. Reverb. Yeah, just a little bit so that it creates this ambience, like a little bit of noise. And it's quite safe to overload the reverb now because we also have docking on it, right? So it's not gonna clog too much the kick drum and everything else. I very much like it. Okay, and now Let's find the clap sound. Again, I'm gonna go into the sound browser, filter by claps, and there was one very dark clap somewhere, and I think it's gonna fit very nice. Yeah, I think it's this one, hip clap. It's also quite uh, wide, which I, which I like. Let's put it very classic, Tech House or Techno Way um, on the every other beat. We can overdrive it a bit more. And create this anticipation clubs that are going to go into more into reverb. And then a bit of delay. Yep, and these guys are going to have a fill condition. And I'm gonna copy these guys and paste them here. And then whenever I hold the page or fill, wow, that's very nice. Okay, we're done with clubs. So let's save it. And now let's go into track number two and roll the sound browser again and try to find some percussion to it. So I think this one is gonna work fine. it. Okay, that sounds very good so far. Okay. And now let's try to find another sound on the track 11. And again, I'm going into the percussion. Um, it's filtered by percussion so far, but now since I'm in analog track over here, it's gonna find the only sounds that fit to this track. Yeah, I think this one is gonna work. Cool. 
last but not least, I would like to add some a melody to our track and then jam a little bit. So I'm gonna go into Swarm again, super loud, super loud. Make it tiny short. Reverb. And then let's see what kind of scale do we have. Ah, we don't have any scale so far. So let's go into the minor scale. C is fine. And then fold the keyboard. Something like this. modulation. Let me mute a few things because it's too much. So we can modulate noise modulation. Modulate the modulation, that's what we like doing. Let's use the random LFO with the hold mode, sample and hold. So every time the note hits, it's gonna sample random value from the LFO and use it for the modulation. Let's make it faster. Nice. Overdrive. We can also modulate the tune animation within a second LFO, but slowly. The tune animation, um, slow with a sign. Let's use the second filter to leave it only on the high end of, or like mid-range and high. Let's make it wider with a delay, but not too much because too much is gonna, yeah, too much is gonna be too much. And let's also go back into our sequencer and pan them a little bit. We don't have third LFO, but we can pan manually, right? Okay, that sounds very good. And now let's jam a little bit. And I would like to start with low energy, actually so that we have an intro. It's gonna be a kick drum and our bass line, and then slowly add other things while we go.
I think that's pretty much it for today's video and I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you've learned something new for yourself that you can apply to your own music production workflow or at least got inspired to go and make music. There are several ways to support this channel. First of all, you can go to patreon.com slash ehor and become my patron. This is the best way to support this channel and also you will get the access to our Discord server. Obviously, you can like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to this channel and hit this bell button or actually hit that thanks button. All these really help this channel to get exposed to the larger audience. And if you're interested in the gear that I feature in my videos, you can also use the affiliate links in the description. If you would like to check other Beats from Scratch videos, you can check either this one or that one. Thanks for watching and until the next time, have fun!